Ratona, what do you make of Mr. Hertzvon's reaction? I cannot say, my lady. One thing I can say, though, there's a lot of bad history associated with Rune. With what we've learned since our encounter with Rudo Zevitz this afternoon, I feel as if we may have bit off more than we could chew. But seeing as Hertzvon has provided us with a lead, I suggest we take up his offer and proceed to Ivel's before the specified time tomorrow night. Do you think we could go there and ask around now? I mean, I bet we might learn something new. I, I don't see why not. I'm sorry, Ratona. I, I just can't wait until tomorrow night. I need to know. I understand, my lady. All right, let's head over there now and see if their patrons know anything that might help. There's always a chance we could run into this Albus character before tomorrow. Yeah, totally. I've never seen so many people drinking this much before the early evening. It's making me thirsty. I think having an early ale is good if it gives them enough energy to make it to the early evening. Hi again, girls. Wow, you're a sight for sore eyes. A pair of ripe, really ripe, beautiful blossoms gracing this tavern. Oh, you remember us. Your memory is commendable, especially for working in an establishment as popular as this. How could I forget doves as dazzling as you two? If I did, I'd bash me thick noggin until it got joggin. Attention everyone, that fellow there is walking out the last order of the service. Oh. We ain't taking no more orders. Come back again soon for the evening service. Aw, oh, sorry girls. I know you came out of your way. Could you please come back again for tonight's dinner service? I'll be sure to serve you again. Um, to be honest, we weren't hoping for a meal when we came here today. Uh, you weren't? We have a question that we needed to ask, and we're hoping to find out here. I'm sorry, sir. This is really urgent. Do you know anybody here by the name of Albus? Albus? You mean Albus F Falster? Of course I know him. He's one of our dear regulars. Could you describe his physical appearance for us? We need to put a name to a face. Ah, oh, sure. He's a quiet, shy-looking, middle-aged guy. Don't let his soft-looking mug fool ya. His smarts are sharper than our butcher's cleaver. I think he works at Zevitz Enterprise. He do doest, he doest come around much, oh, doesn't is what that's supposed to be. He doesn't come around much anymore, but when he does, he always eats dinner over there. The waiter pointed out a specific seat near the center of the tavern. That's perfect. Thank you so much for your assistance. I never knew Mr. Folster wasn't to terms with his age yet. That sly devil. Guess the younger ladies go for the shy act if he's had this much success. Huh? Typical. I'm going to kindly inform you that your line of thought is gravely mistaken. We only asked that our question be answered. We didn't need the extra commentary or the misconception of your infuriating fantasies. <laughs> you look really scary when you're angry, Ratona. Well, now what? What should we do now, my lady? We can return later to the tavern tonight to see if Albus is around. Ratona, look over there! Rune! Uh, good afternoon, Miss Sophie, Miss Rutoda. A spark jolted through my entire body from shock. Rune! W what's going on? What happened to your eyes? They're lifeless. This time, Rune doesn't just appear to lack emotion, she feels lifeless. I don't know any other way to accurately elaborate this eeriness, but I would liken her to a doll. How can she be alive when she feels so devoid of life? Oh, I've been looking for you, too. I sincerely apologize for being unable to meet with you both at the appointed time. There wasn't a speck of sincerity to be felt, as Rune arched her body downwards in a bow. R rune Wha- What happened to you? Why didn't you meet with us? Oh, this is the sediment stone Master Rudo confiscated from me earlier today. This is the reason I wanted to meet with you both this afternoon, but my carelessness greatly delayed that meeting. Please take this. The stone is all yours. Forget about the stone! What happened? Did that man do something to you? Who is Rudo Zevitz? What is he to you? Why do you call him Master Rudo? Because Rudo Zevitz is my master and my owner. Was it my imagination? Or did Rune grin out of the corner of her mouth just now? It's a variable expression that is entirely dependent on whatever emotion a person associates it with, but Rune's emotional detachment from the grin is abnormal. Owner? You... You're not an object, nor do you belong to anyone, Rune. Why would you call him your owner? Because I am an object, Miss Selphine. She spoke those words without any hint of hesitation, her voice clear and sharp as crystal. What in... I don't believe it. Rune, is he holding you against your will? Is he blackmailing you? 
Master Rudo is neither holding me against my will, nor is he blackmailing me. I am willingly in the employ of Master Rudo. As I am willingly here, meeting with you both. What was that? It was slight, but no matter how much I try to convince myself otherwise, it was a sign of emotion. You... you don't appear to be at his side willingly, Rune. You can't fool me. My lady. Rune, please! Please just tell us everything! We want to help you! I thought we were friends! I do not have the authorization to make nor become friends with anyone. And my name is Sarah. I sincerely apologize for giving you both the incorrect name during our first encounter. Please address me as Sarah from this moment forward. Whether we will have any moments after today remains uncertain. Sarah bowed deeply once more and formed her lips into another seemingly innocuous but lifeless smile. No, Rune! Artificial. That is the most appropriate description for Rune, or Sarah. Everything about her seemed off. From the moment I met her, the indistinguishable presence, the expressions devoid of emotion and the lifelessness. Every word she speaks, every action she performs, it all feels so artificial and inhuman. Her formulaic, emotionless responses to our concerns from our encounter thus far are evidence of my assertions. I must attend to other business now, so unless there is anything else, I bid you both a good day. What? Wait! Wait a second! Rune. Sarah, whatever name it is that you go by, before you leave, there is something I want to say. No matter how devoid of emotion you try to phrase your frigid responses, both Selphine and I consider you our friend. Sarah had turned and started walking in the opposite direction until my statement stopped her. If there is anything we can do to help you, please, don't hesitate to ask. Tell us the truth. If you're not being held against your will, if you're not being forced to labor away for Rudo Zevitz, then what is it that keeps you bound to him? Why do you feel attached to him so much, even though he treats you like an object? Is it something she can't disclose in full confidence to others? What is it that compels her to choose to stay with Rudo Zevitz? No matter how she tries to hide it, Rune doesn't appear to be staying by Rudo Zevitz's side willingly. So, why? You don't have to subject yourself to his brand of treatment. We're all free to make our own decisions. If she really is staying by his side by choice, there's little we can do to help her. If... If... If you don't want us to get involved any more than we are, then... Miss Rotona... She cut me off. You have the wrong idea. Does a hammer question its role as a tool? Does it curse its own destiny? I am not being held against my will, nor do I question my purpose. If this has not dawned upon you yet, I will clarify this once more for you. I do not have any authority because I am property of Zevitz Corporation. I do not have the freedom to make my own decisions because I am property of Zevitz Corporation. I do not have the right to feel or feel attachment towards Master Rudo. I am an object. I am a tool. I am the hammer. She spoke in succession, without a single hint of emotion this time. That shouldn't be possible. Nobody could drown themselves in such depression without struggling to intake a single breath of air. This thing... This thing is not the girl we met yesterday. She is not our rune. Goodbye, Miss Sophine, Miss Rotona. Oh god, that's so sad. How could Rune have changed so much over the course of a day? It's the worst scenario that neither of us could even have imagined possible. I glanced at Selphine and saw flames raging within her sky-blue eyes. M my lady? Ratona, I can't remember the last time that I felt this angry! I'm angry enough to grab her by the arms and shake some sense into her! I don't care if she ends up despising me for it! This was Rune's decision, my lady, as much as it pains me to admit. I understand you're displeased with our conversation, but if you sincerely chase after her and attempt to shake some sense into her, Ru Sarah may really despise you, my lady. I can live with that, but something's been bothering me. Something being? It's, well, it's probably the same exact thing that's still bothering you. Who is she, really? Is she Rune, or is she Sarah? Is she really the girl who guided us around in exchange for the perspective of a pair of outsiders, or... Or was it all an act? I just want to know the truth, Ratona. And it's not just Rune I want to know about. I want to know about Kadia, and the Outer Pole, and the Inner Pole, and so much more. I want to know if slavery is a cultural practice here. I... 
I want to know if discriminatory practices are being done here. But more than anything, I want to know what happened to our friend. Sophine. Do you... Do you think you could condone any sort of discriminatory practice, my lady? Famine, pestilence, war... They're all things that have been eradicate, erect, eradicated from Ruhizuagod for the most part. Regardless of Cadia and the Outer Pole being far beyond the borders of the Monocrofters' alliance, I don't believe either of us could tolerate the practice of slavery. It's not a matter of pragmatics, Ratona. Now that we're in a completely different land and culture, I, I would rather know as much as I can, even if I can't change anything. Selfine's eyes appeared tinged with an uncharacteristic vigor as she gazed toward the direction that Rune had departed. Hours have passed well into the evening since our encounter with Rune. While Selfine slumbered away at our inn, exhausted from the afternoon's events, I silently sneaked away to the central district. Uncontrollable curiosity clawed away at my mind, unsettling me for the latter half of the afternoon. That curiosity was slightly put to ease once I attained the information I sought from the quartermaster. Nearby Zevit's Enterprise's mana mine was a cemetery. Oh god. They dug up girls and used them in a weird thing? Is that where this is going? Fortunately for me, I was informed that the cemetery was proximate to the woods where the riptide carried both Selphine and me. With my bearings in mind, I set out to return to the oxygen-deficient forest, and after several minutes, I came upon the cemetery. It appeared well-maintained and unusually bereft of dread, but it was sealed by wrought-iron bars and a locked gate. But a cemetery is still a cemetery, even at night. This distinct lack of dread and dreariness is unsettling. A thick mist suddenly fell upon the wooded area, shrouding the cemetery and my surroundings in a smoky veil. Where to begin? I bypassed the sealed gate and retrieved the parchment that the innkeeper had given me before my departure. Apparently it reads Rune Zevitz in the language here. I have to find her headstone to silence my concerns once and for all. I'm still quite illiterate in the language, so I'll have to match every name on these headstones to the name written on this parchment. This way, at least I'll know who our friend is, and whether the rune we know is really Rune Zevitz or Sarah. Oh god. Twenty minutes have elapsed since I began my search. Oh, the cemetery is large. The mist has caused me to lose my bearings. I can't even tell where the main gate is anymore. Hmm? No. Rain. Damn it. If I had to guess, I must have only explored about a third of the cemetery so far. The cemetery is ludicrously large. How many generations of Cadius people are resting beneath the soil on which I stand? The mist has turned into a drizzle. It feels as if it's only going to intensify into a downpour soon. I need to find her headstone soon. Not even five minutes have passed, and already the drizzle has turned into a downpour. By this time, both my coat and cloak had become drenched, slowly sapping away my body's warmth. There isn't much I can do in this rain, even less if the innkeeper's parchment becomes illegible. The rain drowned my spirits and forced me to consider looking for any form of shelter available in the cemetery. Until I saw her. What the fricky frack? Sarah? Her unexpected arrival left me frozen with intangible fear. Mr. Toda, are you searching for Mistress Rude's headstone? I couldn't utter a single response. Her presence, her keen insight, shocked me like electricity. Until this moment, I believed that nothing could ever take me by surprise again. Oh my god! What if... Okay, so it's called the Sisters Project, right? So what if it's just a bunch of, like, clones? Oh, what if it's literally a bunch of runes that are all named different things, but they all look just like his sister because they're all part of the sister project. Oh god, what if there are just runes everywhere? Oh, I can't. No, they couldn't do that because then they, uh, well, maybe they, oh shoot. Okay, anyways. I wouldn't be caught off my guard. And if I ever was, I would turn to Monocroft as my last resort. But even that was rendered useless by the sight of her alone. Who, who, who th I needed to gather and compose myself. I remember she did something similar when we first met. She snuck up on us with her lifeless presence, and I failed to detect her. But her eyes never radiated red. It's just what? What are you, really? 
Sarah's face remained static and devoid of any emotion as the relentless droplets of rain continued to shower upon us. I struggled to keep my eyes open and focused on Sarah against the instinctive reflex to blink against the intrusion of rainwater, but she didn't even bat an eye. You won't find Mistress Rune's headstone here. Why? How do you know? Is it because you're her? Are you Rune Zevitz? Who could say? What kind of response is that? Are you her or are you not her? You've entered the premises of property that is solely exclusive to Zevitz Enterprise. You are not authorized to be on this property. I apologize, but I must insist you leave immediately. Her last words were almost inaudible against the pitter-patter of the rain, but I understood her implication. Please, do not trouble Master Rudo or the Zevitz Enterprise. Both you and Miss Selphine must leave Cadia and never return. Goodbye. And with those parting words, Rune melted into the landscape and disappeared into the forest. It could have been the chill from the rain, but if I'm not mistaken, I sensed a moment of sadness and solitude when her expression changed. Who was it I encountered in the cemetery last night? Rune's grave doesn't exist? Why? Is it because Sarah is Rune? No, that can't be. The townsfolk clearly said that Rune had died. Damn it, this is all getting so confusing. So you snuck out without me while I was asleep, no less, and you even ran into Sarah? I could feel Selphine's biting displeasure sink its teeth into my skin. I would have liked to say a word or two to her as well, but somebody didn't take that into consideration. Forgive me, my lady, but the hour was late, and I didn't want to risk anything that would accelerate the development of your mana shock. Somebody wasn't thinking about what their dear friend wanted. Oh, no! I offer my lady a thousand pardons. You have my word this won't happen again. Never is a pretty strong word, Ratona. Selphine appeared determined to maintain in her relentless glaring. Ugh, not even I thought that she would regard my actions with such scorn. I suppose I'll have to take your word for now, Ratona, but don't think you're off the hook just yet. Uh, understood. Listen, Ratona, I know I'm useless for the most part. My lady. Oh, come on, you know it's true. Don't deny it. I'm just saying this to make you feel worse, but it's a fact I've come to accept. I have zero talent in Monocroft, in Battlecroft, in everything, really. I know I'll never be as varied and versatile as you. My fear is I'll become so burdensome that I'll be weighing you down with every step you take. But as much as the fates seem to prefer that I stand idly by, I feel my proper place is to be by your side, Ratona. Uh, please elaborate, my lady. What do you mean? As my royal guardian, you've always prioritized my safety above all others. I realize that will never change. If we're still in Rehizawa God, I could easily appoint your successor and and free you of your responsibilities of being my royal guardian, and that would put my worries to rest. But we're alone, and we're far away from our home. Your duty as my royal guardian is to ensure my safe return to the kingdom of Rehizawa God, right? Correct. So if something happened to you, do you really think I can make it back home on my own? Ritona, I want to share the burden. We gotta help keep each other alive. Do you understand, Ritona? Ritona? Here. We're on equal standing. Rit... Ritona Rain Vasta, you're my dearest friend, and I can't bear the thought of losing you, so please. That really caught me off guard. In this dire situation where one's title carries no weight, as far as the situation is concerned, Selphine and I are equals. How could I not notice something so simple? You have my word, my lady. From this moment forward, you and I are on equal standing. Yep! seems like I've been treating her as I did when we were both young. A large burden seems to have been lifted off my shoulders. So, if you don't mind, I actually had a suggestion I've been wanting to make. Uh, by all means. Ratona, I want to try casting Monocroft. What? Girl, you crazy! Zevitz Enterprise Boardroom, Rudo Zevitz awoke after a rare and impromptu nap induced from reading the mountain of mundane paperwork strewn across the table. His expression appeared ghastly, as if he had awoken from a terrible dream. 
Rudo briefly chafed his forehead to dispel the grogginess, irritated and perturbed by his unpleasant daydream. Why, he wondered in silence, why must I be haunted by these memories once more? Sarah. It's all because of Sarah. Her actions have caused me to subconsciously recall the horrors I witnessed during my childhood. Why must I relive the blood and those screams once more? I recalled the deep resentment I harbored toward my father. I remember the compassion I felt for my mother, and when they passed, I took any chance of my reconciliation with them, and left me with a parting gift of regret. Twelve years, twelve years ago, everything felt like a bad dream I wanted so badly to awaken from. Thank you.